ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. You know, when studying history or reading the Bible, it is very difficult to place oneself in the, in the position or the times about which we are talking. Nevertheless, we have, we have no choice. We have to try our best to do that. I want to refer to one episode in the Bible, which is the following. Our third patriarch, Jacob, had 12 sons. Those are the 12 tribes of Israel. We all know that. But he also had a daughter. Her name was Dina. This Dina, according to the Bible, goes out one day into the field. Who knows? To collect roses, to look around, to get fresh air. And there's a fellow by the name of Shechem. He's a prince. He sees her. A young lady takes one look at her. And he has sexual relations with her. Was it a consensual relation? Who knows? But in any event, he has sexual relations with her. And he takes her to his father's home. His father's the king. His name is Hamor. And he tells his father, you know, I really like this girl. I love her. I want to marry this girl. So this man, Hamor, says, well, let's see. She is a daughter of these fellows who are around here with cat, let's go to meet them. And he goes and speaks to Jacob and he says, you know what? My son wants to marry your daughter. But you know, not only that, let us mingle, the two of us, let us work together. Our sons will marry your daughters and vice versa. And we'll become one people. Well, Jacob doesn't know what to do. So they say the following, two of the sons who are really the brothers, father and mother of this Dina, they are Shimon and Levi, they say the following, listen, if you want to do this, you have to go through a certain process because for us, all males must be circumcised. If you are willing to go through circumcision, maybe we'll do business with you. Well, Shem and Hamor go to the portal of the city like it was done in those times. That was where the courts of justice used to be at the entrance of the city. And the people gather around them and they say, you know, they're willing to marry with us, to intermingle with us. However, they want all males to be circumcised. You know what they say? We'll do it. And we're going to be circumcised. Then the story goes, the third day after the circumcision, which according to our rabbis is the most painful day, Shimon and Levi, the two brothers of Dina, come into the city and kill all the males there and take the women hostage and take their cattle. They destroy everything and they take everything for ransom. And of course, they take back their daughter. Well, Jacob, when he hears about that, he says, what will the people of the land do to us? My question is, did the brothers act correctly? Was it right to kill all the males because of what one of them had done? Well, apparently they were all accomplices in some way. This is the way they did business in those days. You like a girl, you just do whatever you want with her because women are the weaker sex. But does that justify killing all the men there? It's very difficult to stomach that. Not only that, you know, this fellow, Shechem, did the honorable thing. It says in the Bible also that if a man has relations with a young lady, then he has to marry her and he cannot divorce her afterwards. But this fellow was willing to do that, he was willing to marry her. But on the other hand, had they mingled together, the heritage of Jacob would have simply disappeared. You know, the Jewish people wouldn't exist because everything would have been one big mishmash and most likely, not only would idolatry have introduced itself into the Jewish people, maybe it would have overtaken the idea of one and only God. Well, it is very difficult to judge with our morals, with our principles of today, what happened in those days. 
did the brothers of this Dina act, act correctly? Well, in a sense, they saved the existence of the Jewish people. But on the other hand, one feels that there was great injustice done to a people that weren't directly really involved. There was one episode, this Shechem had relations with Dina. Maybe it was even consensual, but even if it was not, he was willing afterwards to marry the girl, which in those times was very, very important. There's a very, a very important principle in the Talmud that says the following, for a woman, it is better to be married than to be alone. Well, women in those times were basically defenseless. They needed a man, and here was a man that was willing to stand by her side and defend her. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is that there are many episodes in the Bible. Not, maybe not that many, but there are episodes in the Bible that are very difficult to judge. Who is the right one? Who is the wrong one? And I think in life also, we are disposed somehow to find right and wrong. You know, this is right and that is wrong. Yet many instances, many circumstances don't let themselves to an easy solution. One has to reflect. It depends upon the, the circumstance. It depends upon the time that it is done. It depends upon my mood. So therefore, I say to you, with something that I've repeated on other occasions, don't be too fast. Don't immediately judge somebody else. Don't immediately judge a situation. Study it well. Evaluate it. Many a time, we don't come to a clear conclusion, but at least to understand the problem, to realize that there is an ethical problem, that is already a step forward. You are growing by understanding a difficult situation.